Hi there, it's Anne here uh, at Life LDC Knits. Uh, I'm glad you've uh, popped in to join me for a, a little knit chat. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, 2021 is going to be for me a year when I finally tackle intarsia. I've never been able to get my head around intarsia before, so this year is the year because if there's any year that I'm going to do it, this is going to be the year. So I hope you uh, settle down for a, a little bit, maybe grab a cup of tea, coffee, or join me in my favorite glass of water, and uh, we'll have a little chat. Just to get started, I want to share with you the latest uh, CAFE collection that has come out this year. It's called CAFE Facets Felted Tweed, and it introduces his uh, 10 new shades of felted tweed yarn. So have a look at that and I'll join you after. Aren't those new colors just absolutely fabulous? They're in addition to the uh, the, the the brights that uh, that were added to the Rowan line in uh, 2018 when the first Case Colors book came out. Do you remember? I knit this uh, wild and crazy bright for me, very bright uh, scarf back from that book. Love it wear it quite a bit. Love that one. So um, then the next year, oh, before I go to the next year. So when this book came out, I knit this, I knit the stripes because of course stripes are safe, right? And what I really, really loved was all these intarsia, wonderful intarsia things. Like this uh, cool weave, it's called. And look at this checkerboard. Gorgeous. 
And what really caught my eye was, I just love this halo spots. But you know, that is true intarsia. Big dollops of color on a background and then there is a couple of stitches outline. So I, I decided at the time, no. I thought about it and then said no. Then when the second book in 2019, Winter Vintage came out, love the color, cover of this, love the hat, love the whole thing, the stranded whatever, the stranded uh, scarf. I looked at the patterns on here. And again, the one that really, really, really called, called to me was an, another intarsia design. Dark Daisy, I love this Dark Daisy. Look at the colors, oh, just spectacular. So when the third collection came out this year and COVID and everything, I uh, didn't get the book from Rowan, but I did, I uh, purchased and downloaded from the Knit Rowan website, the whole collection, case, felted tweed collection uh, as digital downloads. And I really like digital downloads and I've put them into my uh, good notes. I don't know if I can show you that here. Hold on a second. Good notes. So what I did was I, too, too bright, too bright, too bright. I downloaded it onto my good notes and then I snagged a picture of the new colors and then it goes right into the pattern. So you don't have pictures of the of the of the designs, but you have the actual patterns. So you see, I've got the patterns. You can't see them, so I can flip through them really careful quickly here. So anyway, uh, I really enjoyed uh, getting them digitally because now you can look at them online or you can print them out. Um, so it suits everything. If you're one of those uh, knit companion people, you might really want to to investigate uh, getting them as digital downloads. Okay, back to my, back to the subject of today. The subject of today is 2021. Anne's gonna have a colorful 2021, a year of colorful knitting, and I'm going to uh, tackle intarsia. So, you know, Case the one to think about intarsia because from way back at the beginning of the Rowan magazines, he has done the ultimate intarsia projects. And one of the ones that everybody talks about, he talks about all the time, is the fact that this cover sweater from uh, Rowan number 10, the famous Swallows and Amazons collection, modeled by a very young Kate Moss, is an absolutely gorgeous design. It's called Killam, it's, it's world renowned. I would love to knit it someday. It is in one size only, but it's huge as it was back in the day. And every little bit and piece of that intarsia is done with two different strands of yarn held together. And that's why you get that beautiful, beautiful marled look. So the difference between the intarsia from back then and the intarsia today is the technique is the same, but I feel the designs have been simplified uh, a little bit because the, you're using one strand of yarn, the, the motifs are big and they're bold. And uh, I thought, you know, if, this, if there's any time, Anne, that you're ever going to learn intarsia today, right now, 2021 is the time. So when I looked at the new collection, the thing that, uh, the, the project that jumped out at me was the big zigzag scarf, because I thought that would be perfect for a new, a new intarsia knitter like me. And I absolutely, uh, I, loved, I love all these new colors, and I thought it was great. I asked Rowan to send me the yarn for that design. Eventually it arrived. But I got to tell you, by the time it arrived, I downloaded all my patterns and I really, really had a good look at them all because the pictures on your own, on your own screen, you know, nice and bright. And I just loved the paint Dobbs blanket. 
What's a knitter to do? Well, what's a knitter to do? A knitter gets online and she orders some more yarn from her favorite local yarn store, Felted Tweed uh, Yarn Pusher <laughs> Needle Emporium. And within two days, a little package of yarn arrives and it was exactly the yarn I needed because I needed, I had all the colors, except I needed the background shade, which is, I forgot what name this shade is. Fjord. Fjord is the background shade. So I got uh, four balls of Fjord. I lined up all the other ones. I went stash diving for a couple and some of the new shades that were sent to me. And I knit a wrap or a shawl or a scarf, whatever you want to call it. I changed the paint daubs blanket into a wrap, shawl, scarf. It was my first attempt at, at uh, Intarsia. But I have to tell you, I cheated. How can you cheat? I can hear you saying it. How can you cheat at Intarsia? Well, because of the, the makeup of this design, the fact that it's one solid color background and there's little drops of color on the background and there's no, there's no outlining color, there's just one color. This was just screaming out to me to be done in a sort of a faux intarsia technique where you carry the background color you weave the background color just the way you would weave in any end when you're doing color work you take the, the background color and you go up and down up and down up and down behind all the pattern stitches you did your pattern stitches you carried on to the end of the row picking up all the different little colors as you went along and doing your rows i wove the background uh, fjord color up and down behind every single stitch on the knit rows and the purl rows so that it made a nice flat fabric. Can you see it there? From the right side, you don't even actually, well, yeah, you do feel that it's a little bit thicker than the, the, the single strand uh, area but not very much. Like look how drapey it is and it's just gorgeous. I just absolutely love it. Now I know you're gonna to say to me, Anne, how do you do that? It's really simple. You just knit with your background shade. And then when you get to the colored part, you knit with the colored part and you weave the background in as you go. Simple. Think about it. Put some put some stitches on your on your needle and give it a go. So I love this. I love the whole concept of it. I love how it feels. I love how it drapes. I love everything about it. So hope you hope you might, uh, maybe you want to give it a try because I could see this in all sorts of colors. Like for example, just hold on one second. One of the new shades is black. Now think about black and French mustard and sulfur. And then maybe just as a little pop you want to put in there, maybe you would put some fjord in there just to give it a little pop. Or maybe you would want to do French mustard with black, just two shades. Or you could put some, some gray in there, black and gray. I don't know. I think I just love French, this French mustard color. This French mustard is, is going to be um, the sweater that I'm going to make to wear with the shawl. I think I'll do that one in the uh, new collection that, um, oh, I forgot to mention the two sweaters in this new collection were actually done by Lisa Richardson as sort of base pieces to, 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 uh, 
to showcase the new colors, but they are great pieces to have to wear your really colorful shawls with. So that's what I'm going to do. I think the one with the little eyelets down the front, I will use, um, I will knit uh, in the French, French mustard. That's the one, it's the color it's shown in in the book. So are you going to knit uh, Try and Tarja this year, or maybe you're already an Intarja star? I don't know, it's, it's always eluded me. It's always been something I've never been patient enough to attempt, but I think this year is finally the year to give it a go. So also this year, I'm gonna carry on with Stash Happy. And just as an example, um, this is some Rowan Color Spun that I've uh, had in Stash for years. Of course, it's discontinued. I uh, just knit a hat for the hubby and I liked it so much that I decided to uh, knit myself a hat. So I'll show you these next time. So I know this is a short one, but I'm so excited to get on with my next Intarsia project. I will share that with you uh, again also next time. I, um, I'm all gonna try and have an Intarsia in something plain, you know, so that I can, I can mix it up and don't have to be uh, stressed out about my knitting. So until next time, happy knitting, stay safe, do what you're supposed to do, stay home, wear that mask, help support our essential workers, all of them, everyone from the doctors and the nurses to the postman that has to come to your door with all your yarn parcels. <laughs> I've got to know my postman quite well. So until next time, happy knitting. I'm going to demonstrate here how I weave the background shade, in this case, the cream colored big row and big wool behind blocks of color. And I'm going to use this red big wool as my block. So I've cast on 15 stitches. I've done stocking stitch on a few rows. And what I'm going to do is knit five in the cream, five in the red, weaving the cream behind it and then five creamed to finish the row and then I'll work back and do a purl row. Okay so let's get started. Okay so here we go. Five stitches in the cream. This is very uh, <laughs> a very awkward way to knit the, with these big uh, needles and trying to be under the camera so please Forgive me if it looks a little bit strange. So way back somewhere, I learned that when you were doing intarsia, that you always would leave a tail at the front of the work because that way you can bring it up from underneath And there it is ready to be used and so your background shade is here so I'm going to knit my first stitch in the pattern shade and you see that the 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 white is caught in the back already and it's facing down so on my next stitch I'm going to pick that white up knit around it, let it fall, and it's caught in the upward position. So now I'm going to go back to the down position, holding it down, knit a stitch, holding it up, knit a stitch, and holding it down, knit a stitch. And so you see the five stitches of red have been knit and the white is woven in behind them. Woven, not stranded. There is a difference, woven. So now, again, following traditional um, intarsia technique, pick up the yarn you want to use from underneath and knit to the end.
And there you go, first row done. Now comes the purling back. Okay, to purl back, here we go. Five stitches purling back, the background shade. First uh, color block shade, pick up from underneath and purl. And you'll see that that automatically locks this background shade down. Insert the needle, get ready to purl. Put this up and over your, your needle, purl. Let it fall, pull your next stitch, it's locked down, up and over, it's just caught in there, and the last stitch, it's locked down. Letting your uh, block of color yarn drop, picking up the back ground stitch, back round shade, finish off the row. You bring it from underneath and around and just finish off those last five stitches. And there we go. The background shade is woven behind this block of color. So I'm going to carry on and finish these uh, last five rows and we'll see what it looks like at the end. So let's just untangle a bit. So we have four rows of the red. So we're making a block on a background of white. And the white is woven in behind the red so it doesn't catch anywhere. And when you go to uh, finish the end, this one that's hanging out the front, you just pull it out from here and weave it in. You weave in the ends of the, the colors, the colored pops on the stitches of the color pops. So there you go, that's a little color block on a plain background. It's just a way of putting that little color block on that background and you, you carry the background shade behind the color block. And that way, for example, in this pattern, instead of having to have uh, separate balls of yarn between each color block along the row, you just carry the main color from one end to the other back and forth. Um, I don't mind doing it. I, I think the I think it it serves its purpose. And when you see the back of my sh uh, shawl, this is this is big gauge, so you can really see it. But when you see the back of my shawl, uh, I don't mind it at all. Give it a try. Cast on some stitches and give it a try. 
I was fortunate to be able to attend the CAFE exhibit at the American Museum in Bath 2014. The whole museum was full of CAFE samples, samples of his knitting, samples of his quilting featuring the gorgeous fabrics that he designs and of course tapestries he does the designs for the ermine uh, tapestries and there were absolutely amazing one-of-a-kind pieces there on display i hope you enjoy this